Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, the web seminar, Contact Tracing and Giant Data Collectors, a journey from utopia to dystopia. Uh, during this uh, web seminar, you will understand why we called it uh, like uh, a journey from utopia to dystopia as a question mark. And as you all know, uh, we are facing um, actually one, one of the uh, worst uh, challenges uh, in, in, in at least in, in my uh, lifetime uh, with a pandemic and we are facing these challenges uh, actually every day in our uh, working environment in, in our uh, family privately and, and uh, professionally so this is something that concerns all of us and this is why we decided with the of course support of German Science Foundation and a number of uh, distinguished colleagues uh, to set up this uh, somewhat different uh, um, web seminar about contact tracing. And I'm going to give you a very short overview because I assume that not everybody is an expert in this area. Some of you are maybe curious and some of you are maybe working in this area, journalists, politicians. We had uh, an, a huge number of uh, registrations um, from different countries, from uh, different professions. And we are very happy that uh, uh, the resonance to, um, to our actually relatively short notice um, um, announcement of this uh, web seminar was, was, was uh, so high. So my name is Amareza Sadegi. Uh, I am the spokesman of uh, Cybersecurity and Privacy Research Center at TU Darmstadt. And um, I would like to give you a very short uh, overview of what is going to be the subject of this uh, uh, web seminar. So first of all, um, I just need to be able to run my uh, slides. Uh, interestingly, if you look at uh, the influenza time, which is, I mean, 1918 uh, uh, or around 1918, you will find out that those uh, precautions in pandemic uh, that were um, advised by, by health experts at that time has not changed uh, up to today. Uh, wearing masks, uh, social distancing, uh, being uh, careful, washing hands. Uh, and it's amazing that we have uh, an advanced technology today compared to that time. And we are still using those old uh, uh, wisdoms or let's say suggestions and uh, precautions that are still uh, hopefully working. Now in this context, it is very important to have um, an identification of all infection chains. So then this is all what, what this uh, web seminar is about. Uh, how do I identify infection chains? And uh, typically in the past, um, it was a manual uh, tracing. So how do I know with whom I had contact? And this is why we call it contact tracing and manual tracing is usually very cumbersome. So, uh, and it is error prone because people cannot memorize with whom they had contact. And um, uh, especially in indoor situations of transportations, it's, it's very hard to uh, follow with whom somebody who uh, uh, has the symptoms or has been infected has contact. So this is why uh, in many um, places and many countries, uh, the digital technology and actually a number of computer science together with epidemiologists started uh, to uh, deploy digital technology for contact tracing to at least help or support the manual tracing. So we cannot avoid manual tracing. It is still the, the core part of uh, uh, contact tracing in, in infection chains, but we uh, can support it with the help of digital contact tracing. And this is also itself is, is, is debated. Do we need it or not? We will have this discussion in our panel this today. So. So uh, just going back to that, this was kind of in, in many, uh, play, many regions in this world, it was a kind of utopia. If we have this support of digital technology, then we can break the infection chains much more effectively. So this is kind of uh, wishful thinking. And in, in this way, there are two uh, main approaches for uh, deploying digital technology for contact tracing. One of them is called centralized, the other one is uh, decentralized and uh, they have, of course, uh, from the architecture point of view and from design point of view, uh, uh, they are different. Uh, for example, in central centralized approach, a party, a one party 
has control over the information, but that doesn't mean that this information is, is everything in plain text. It could also be a, a kind of anonymous information. Also in decentralized where users have control and not a, a central party over their own data. So this is in theory, uh, the decentralized approach is considered to be more appropriate for building systems that uh, would like to have, or at least have the requirement of a scalable privacy so that you can share data among mistrusting parties. So this is more or less, first of all, in theory. Uh, one of the very popular technologies that had been used for contact tracing is um, Bluetooth low energy. Of course, in different uh, places, there were other technologies, very, even simpler technologies have been used. I will come to that. But Bluetooth technology was one of the most popular technologies. Why? Because it is on every uh, device that uh, uh, from different form factors that you can think of. And it was misused actually for measuring the distance and the contact duration. And uh, based on, on these, these, let's say, information, you can, um, you can uh, build a risk score system if there is, uh, for example, a distance less than 1.5 meter and the duration of contact was more than 15 minutes, then there is an alarm raised, depending on that uh, policy. So um, Bluetooth low energy, if you look at the literature is not really made for this kind of things. We are just exploiting it because it is very uh, widespread. So the challenge in the contact tracing uh, technologies and deployment of them is of course um, something this may be considered as a, a luxury of, of uh, democratic systems or maybe something that is a human right, but it is uh, privacy. So what kind of information do you collect from people to really understand the pandemic chain, uh, infection chain? Location, date and time, or any other personal data. In some uh, uh, countries, as I come to that, for example, if you see the worldview of contact tracing, I just have a selected uh, contact tracing systems that are, for example, centralized approach, uh, let's say mostly in, in, in Asia, and that was the starting point, for example, in China, where each, uh, um, um, each province has its own, so to say, um, uh, system, uh, there was no Bluetooth using, uh, no, no Bluetooth technology was used. Uh, they, they were using just uh, big data and analysis by having included uh, big data giants like uh, Alibaba and, um, and Baidu and others. In other countries, uh, especially in Europe and uh, in uh, many states in the in US, uh, there were a number of decentralized systems um, uh, put into deployment and put into practice. And there was a huge debate, especially in Europe, about the privacy aspect. So if you say, for, if you take, for example, the, the system that is used in India, it is a privacy nightmare for privacy advocates. But maybe for many people there, uh, it's it's uh, not a big deal because you are concerning with a pandemic in a in a in a country that has a huge population density. So this is also a matter of debate. I will discuss that also in panel. Um, so in the heat of all these discussions and in the heat of all uh, you know uh, discussing about how do we uh, deploy, how do we build this technology in each country? And many politicians thought, oh, this is a big solution. And as uh, some of our colleagues say, uh, it was a kind of placebo for, for, uh, for many people that this technology will help us to really uh, um, uh, have a kind of a big improvement in or big step towards improvement of, of uh, manual tracing. So and Google and Apple found in this uh, uh, um, situation, the big love and the big friendship among themselves and came up with a, API, which is called Google and Apple Exposure Notification, uh, with the abbreviation is GAEN, and um, they provide this uh, API uh, to each state or each country uh, that is approved, to an organization that is approved by the government, and then you can use an app for contact tracing using their uh, API, which is included in the operating system, so nobody else has access to it. It's kind of domination tour, but uh, this is a matter of debate of uh, this uh, web center. So 
there has been uh, a lot of uh, papers and uh, scientific uh, publications on privacy and security attacks on, on uh, Google and Apple proposal. And we are going to discuss that uh, with our distinguished uh, speakers uh, today. Um, and um, we have, I'm, I'm really uh, delighted that all these speakers um, accepted uh, our invitations and are going to present uh, their expert view to this topic. Uh, they are listed on the web page, but also here on this um, slide. And we have also a panel, don't miss it. We also have uh, uh, very uh, good people who uh, have extensive experience in privacy technologies, but also in technology in, in, in general. Um, and with that, I would say, uh, I conclude with uh, um, some rules. Um, we have for each speaker 25 minutes for presentation and five minutes for qu uh, question and answers. This is what we planned. Usually these plans never work out, but we try to keep on on time because it's very exhausting uh, web seminar and we want you to uh, keep up, uh, uh, you know, concentrating with what we are uh, talking about. Uh, if there is a uh, question and, and uh, answer session, you want to have a comment or you want to have a question, keep it short, please state your name. If you have an affiliation, please, please mention that affiliation. Uh, we do not misuse that. This is a university um, web seminar and uh, this helps at least to identify who is speaking. Um, please use mute when uh, speakers are, are uh, speaking. I think these are uh, rules that you all know. I'm just repeating them. Um, and then um, raise your hand if you uh, have a question. We will look at that. Also, you can ask your questions in the chat the panel. And uh, there, there are people, Markus Mittinen is uh, uh, one of the people, one of the organizers, and he, he will look into the chat and he's also an expert in this area and he will also answer that if there is a question for a specific speaker, we do it during the session. Each session has, uh, I think, two talks. And in, after these two talks, we have a very uh, uh, low amount of uh, break. So let's say two minutes or three minutes, and then we start with the next one. We will see how it goes. Uh, 